Zenji also used the word uh, practice. Um, you know, when, when I'm walking down the street, well, I should say almost every day, I, I, I kill a lot of people. I imagine some sort of slight, and I can imagine some sort of battle with them. And I'm always the victor, you know, I'm, I'm constantly the victor. And, it, and it's amazing to me how often I kill people. Um, and I'm trying to speak to your issue around um, racism. I think in some ways we have to sort of recognize those moments when instead of becoming saddened or depressed by them, it's very easy to become depressed when I, you know, I'm killing so many people because I'm so angry. Um, instead of becoming depressed by that realization is to say, oh, you know, I, I finally recognize this. And because I recognize this, I can actually practice something different. So maybe I've killed you, but I can turn around and say, well, bless you, because I realize I've killed you. And try to sort of transform my own sort of way of being in the world so that I'm killing less people. Um, I, I think a lot about what Thich Nhat Hanh talks about, and this is, you know, basic Buddhist teaching where they, you know, in, um, in the paper, you see non-paper elements, right? Uh, I like to think that my nonviolence uh, is, is the stuff, is, is made from my violence. In other words, I, my, my violence is a necessary part of my recreating myself as a nonviolent person. It's what I'm transforming. And so every day, so your racism, okay, you recognize it, that's beautiful. I mean, I think that's a, a fantastic thing because you see it. And now you can do the work. And so that is where, that's, you know, that's something to be, you know, celebrated in the sense of, oh, thank you for showing up. That means I have more work to do. And that means I can, be, I can just continue to sort of work through this and begin to come closer and closer to sort of really embracing our interrelatedness. And that is what we have to do, and that is to practice every day. So I kill less people, but sometimes I, you know, I'm in my car and I have killed so many people, it's a shame. Um, you know, and, and, and it's, it's startling because it's, it's almost embarrassing, but it, it makes me very clear that, oh my God, I have so much violence to work with. Thank goodness I recognize that. And so I wanna leave you with that that thought that, you know, just, just just do the work, do the practice. Because it's not gonna be automatic. Somebody tells you to forgive somebody, well that's you know that's easy to say. You really have to try. You really have to work at it. It's not just a matter of, you know, oh that's what you know Jesus said. And I'm glad Jesus said it. Um but I imagine that it required more work than we there's there's a reason why we don't have uh all those years of his life prior to 33, and you know, he's born, next thing you know, he's going out teaching. It's like, well, how did he get to that point? Um, so I, I think we need to be, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, really. So, um, so, so I, I imagine that he had to do a lot of work, and he had to get a lot of guidance from his mom, for example. Um, <laughs> so so I, would, I would encourage us to practice to do it every day and not get discouraged by it, but, but to see it as a celebration when you recognize that part of you that continues to participate in the logic of empire. We have to change this thing here. Radical reconstruction of society, that's what Martin Luther King talked about, and it begins right here in your own heart. Thank you for being here.